All right, what's up, guys? Volume on my phone. How we doing? Happy uh, Thursday. We got a nice little five gamer today. It's a pretty nice uh, slate. Jayhawk and I were talking before the stream started that there's not really any big injury news like the Clippers guys like, uh, but the stuff that is happening today we already knew about. So, uh, Jayhawk, how we doing? What do you think about the slate? Doing pretty good, man. Um, finally starting to see uh, good weather around here, around the country. I feel like so um, definitely. Good times. And then NBA has been kind of up and down. Uh, the last few slits have been crazy, man. Injury news, players getting ruled out, Kate Cunningham. Uh, it's been it's been rough here in the NBA DFS streets. Yeah, it's uh, yesterday we had two players ruled out after lock. Like Santi Aldama doesn't matter, but uh, well, I mean, JJJ ended up going off, so maybe it mattered a little bit. But Cade Cunningham getting ruled out after lock, uh, very, very frustrating. And then if you watch the stream yesterday, uh, I don't know if it was so much Eric as myself, but like what's top two studs, Giannis and DeJounte, and they're probably the two worst studs of the whole night. So yesterday went awesome. Uh, But tonight, I mean, we have a few pieces of injury news. And just one note, when I was building my dummy lineup, I thought Trey Young was back because they don't have the out tag. Trey Young is not playing tonight. Uh, So just be careful with that. DraftKings, I don't know if there's another player that maybe they're not displaying the Q tags and out tags properly, but um, Trey Young is definitely out. So just keep that in mind. Uh, We already know Kawhi is out. We just got news, I guess like an hour ago. Tobias Harris is out. Jonathan Kaminga is out. And then the notable questionables, like Joel Embiid, I don't know if it matters that much. We'll take a look at Philadelphia. I mean, Tobias Harris being out, if Joel Embiid is out, then we'll definitely have to take a closer look at those guys. Um, Because Tyrese Maxey is questionable too. But uh, Jamal Murray, I think, is the other big Q tag. Jayhawk and I were talking about how Jokic is probably going to look awesome if uh, Jamal Murray is out, but I mean, any other general thoughts on the slate? Yeah, man, I think you highlighted most of the guys here. Um, I was just know Kawhi is once again out for the Clippers on back-to-back games. Now he's been out. So that was the only other big piece of news I wanted to have. Okay, nice. Um, and just so you guys know, FanDuel did cut off the uh, last game, Denver Clippers. So it's only a four gamer over on FanDuel. So the ownerships are going to be a little bit more concentrated, but like, Dylan Brooks being 36% on FanDuel and only 13% on DraftKings. It seems a little bit off. Like his ownership seems a little bit low on DraftKings and he is second on our DK value. So uh, keep that in mind. Dylan Brooks chalk night. It's always fun. <laughs> yeah, um, man. Never inclined to play him, but he's good value. Got to cut him up. I mean, it's like, a, what is this? The Dylan Brooks Draymond Green showdown. <laughs> I think Underdog is running a promotion. If you go like retweet their uh, tweet, um, it's like they're throwing money in the pot every technical <laughs> every and if one of them gets ejected it's even more money so uh go check that out but yeah we were saying ownerships feel kind of weird today jalen johnson daniel gafford cam whitmore top three owned guys basically on both sites i mean what are we doing here yeah i mean definitely seems interesting to say the least here um jalen i get it 6900 does seem a little bit too cheap especially coming off that huge 76 DraftKings point game but guys like whitmore and gafford i'm not like i think they're fine as chalk i'm not really I don't really have a hard stand on them or lean. Um, you kind of want to hear your thoughts on them because I think they're kind of chalk and I'm not really sure if I really get it. Yeah, Cam Whitmore, I get. Um, the problem is he's only been playing 23, 22, 20, 24, 24 minutes. Uh, tonight we haven't projected for 23, which it's like if he had the potential to play 30 minutes and he, okay, he probably does, but it seems like a low probability outcome. Uh, I don't know. The ownership just seems kind of high. Like, well, we'll see what other 4K guys we have. But I mean, just sorting by value, uh, Cam Whitmore six. So it's pretty good for being one of the chalkier guys. I mean, the cheaper guys above him are Dylan Brooks and Derek Jones Jr. And Derek Jones Jr. is a pretty risky click right now. And Dylan Brooks is Dylan Brooks. So uh, we'll see if we can find some other guys. And then with Jalen Johnson, it's so funny. This dude was 5% owned yesterday, put up like 70 fantasy points and now everyone wants to jam him in like i agree he's a good play i don't know if he's 38 percent good and that ownership is definitely inflated because of his good game yesterday but uh he's still a good play uh third in value uh double digit off index gonna look pretty good yeah love jalen here as well um 6900 just seems probably like 500 too cheap in my opinion so yeah definitely agree and uh i mean the 7600 for jalen johnson on fanduel at 38 percent it's pretty scary, but uh, only four games, so we're going to have to make some uncomfortable choices there. He's probably still okay over there. I mean, sorting by Fandle value, he's still number three. 
So the other guy up top here, Daniel Gafford, uh, I was hoping he wasn't going to come in low owned. I mean, I've been over on him every day. He's only playing. I mean, he's not playing that many minutes. We haven't predicted for 26 today, but top of value, like by quite a bit at only 26 minutes is pretty significant on DraftKings. 5,700 sounds really good, even though he's 31% owned. Uh, FanDuel, he's 6,800 at 33%. I like it a little bit less, but uh, I mean, Gafford has shown that ceiling in these few minutes. So yeah. Agreed there. I like Gafford a lot. I mean, 5,700 does seem like, I agree, a 1,000 too cheap compared to FanDuel. So, yeah. And it's kind of weird. Like, uh, he hasn't had a blow-up game, and all of a sudden he's coming in as a chalk. So maybe that's just a reflection of how weak center is tonight. But yeah, uh, we'll see if we can find some pivots off of him. Jose in the chat, what are the chances of Luca and Kyrie going off in the same game? Uh, I can remember it happening once this season. Maybe it's happened more than once. Um, But like both of them hitting ceiling scores to be in a winning lineup, I'm pretty sure I remember it happening once. Uh, It's a little different since it's kind of a shorter slate, Uh, particularly over on Fandle. It's a higher chance of them both being in there. But I don't know. It's probably not a direction I'd go. It's just so much salary, and we do have some pretty good players at the top of OF Index today. I mean, DeJounte, I think, is still going to look pretty great with uh, Trey Young out sub 10% ownership, even though he's close to 10 K now. I mean, the Clippers guys, Paul George and James Harden look great. I think Jalen Brunson's a really strong GPP play. And so we have other options. Yeah, I agree. Like DeJounte kind of had a down game last game too. I expect him to have a pretty good bounce back game here. So I like that whole lot. Yeah. Uh, Was the hot take yesterday. It was Pat Connaughton is going to outscore who? Um, Well, if you got that one, uh, you got me one zero power. <laughs> Does the ownership that Westbrook is pulling mean he's starting? Uh, I can't imagine Westbrook is going to start. Uh, they started Norman Powell in the last game, and reading Clipper fans talking about it, they said that it should be Amir Coffee starting. Just the rotation works out a little bit better. We'll have to see what they do, but for now, Underdog has Norman Powell starting. So uh, keep an eye on that. And the problem with Westbrook, this dude only played like six or eight first half minutes in the previous game. And then most of these minutes he got, like he got up to 24 minutes, but I think he played like the entire fourth quarter. Ty Lue gave up with like eight minutes left. I mean, it was a 20 point game, but um, I don't know. This is, this dude does this sometimes. He just pulls his starters when he doesn't like their effort or whatever. And lets the, lets the bench play. He let Westbrook run the whole fourth quarter. So uh I don't know. He's he's pretty risky coming off the bench, but 4,800 shorter slate. I think we still want to get there a little bit, especially if you're playing like the night slater showdown. Russell's going to look pretty good. Yeah, I agree. I mean, 4,800 does seem probably a little bit too cheap. Um, I agree with the minutes though. They were definitely kind of weird. I think I'm probably fine with him at shock though at 48. I feel like I'm going to be a little bit under this um, 26%. I'd rather get to more Norman Powell. Like It's really odd to me that Norman Powell's coming in for lower ownership than Russell Westbrook. Just to me, I think he's the clear, better play. Model has him as a clear, better play as well. Uh, Zubak looks good at the center position. Center sucks today. So 5,800 on DraftKings at 23% sounds pretty reasonable. And then James Harden and Paul George, I feel like they're both under own. James Harden's been bad. Did he give up on this team again? Did he give up on another team? Is that what's happening? Yeah, man, like he just the past few games he hasn't looked like himself. Yeah, definitely could be giving up on the team, man. Um kind of interested to see what he does. Um I don't know if he I don't know if he's on a one or one year contract left or however long, but it's James Harden, man. I don't know what to expect with him. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we want to like speculate on how he's feeling. Um, especially like nothing's been said. Like they haven't been, like I haven't seen a report come out that said James Harden's unhappy on the Clippers, but uh, regardless, he's still pretty low owned. I think he's still going to be a pretty strong GPP play at 15%. And Paul George at 13% is for sure wrong. I'd be shocked if he came in this low. Um, and I'm saying wrong, not in the sense that we got it wrong, but like if he comes in 13%, then I think the field is making a mistake. He should be higher than 13% owned against Denver. Yeah, like 8,400. I feel like Jimmy, I mean, Jimmy Butler, Paul George without Kawhi Leonard here, I think he should be closer to 20, 25%. Uh, you know, specifically at that price. So like that whole lot. Uh, power. Yeah. Power yesterday said uh, Pat Connaughton's going to outscore Brandon Miller. And I said, it probably, probably won't. And he did. Yep. He did. He got him. Brandon Miller. That's Shout crazy. out to uh, Brandon Miller and Trey Mann yesterday. That's crazy. Yeah. Brandon Miller had a really bad game yesterday. That was, that was tough. <laughs> 
uh josh in the chat dk is not showing a ton of people is out golf gafford is chalk because lively is out but it's not showing on dk yeah i don't know what happened um mentioned this right when the show started like trey young doesn't have an out tag like i mean you click on his name he's out but i don't know why it's not showing in like the roster like he just started exercising his fingers he's not ready to play basketball no <laughs> no rename his ass james Softin. that was a sick one dude thank you for that one nice <laughs> Miller always disappoints. Had, most of the time he does, yeah, except for those couple times that uh it worked out, but the rest of the times was probably pretty frustrating. So let's go ahead and uh let's jump into position by positions. Point guard, shooting guard. Obviously, we have Luka Doncic playing basketball today, so he's gonna be top of the OF index by quite a bit. Uh DeJounte Kyrie. I mean, Jalen Green and uh, Paul George, these are pretty good OF indexes for their salaries. And like even going down to Brunson, Harden, pretty much everyone here, like everyone double digit OF index looks pretty good. I will say Darren Fox's uh, like pro- Vegas props today, his points, rebounds, assist line is kind of low. Um, and so I get the low ownership. It's definitely still worth worth uh, taking some shots on. But from this top group, I mean, we already know we're into Luka, but what else do you what else do you see here? Yeah, man. Um, I feel like after Luca, it's kind of up to whatever you want to do. I think DeJounte, you mentioned earlier, probably the safest option right below 10K here. Um, so I think he'd probably be my second favorite after Luca. Um, and then in terms of Kyrie, Jalen Green, Paul George, I think I'd lean Paul George and Kyrie to Jalen Green, just in terms of the injuries we have with those two. And then obviously Kyrie Irving in a pretty good spot. So um, yeah, Green's kind of the odd man out for me, but Again, he's a really talented player. He can get his shot rolling, so I think he's a great tournament play as well. Yeah, I think uh, from this group, the guys I'm most interested in are Jalen Brunson and uh, Paul George. And then, like you said, DeJounte. Uh, I kind of get the low ownership. We don't have too much value today. Like We've been uh, smothered in value the past few slates, and today it's just not there as much. So I get why he's lower owned, but uh, I will be above the field on DeJounte. I have been every single day. Um. Let's see. I mean, and then Luca, how much Luca are you getting to? Um, so I'm kind of taking a stand today. I'm not playing as much Kyrie. I'm playing just a ton of Luca. So yeah, I'm probably just going to take a pretty big stand. Um, I don't know. I just feel like Luca has just a huge ceiling. I'm not saying Kyrie doesn't, but we've seen Luca go for 80. Um, no player can really match that on, on Dallas. <laughs> yeah. Given that they're basically the same ownership today. I mean, Luca's $4,000 more on DraftKings and $4,000. That's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of salary today, but yeah, I feel like I'd rather just get to Luca a little bit more and I'm still going to play Kyrie, but I don't know if I'll be at this 22% that the field is. Yeah, I agree. Uh, some other guys, like let's take a look at value. See if we find some mid range, like Norman Powell. I mentioned, I really like Norman Powell top of DK value model agrees. Uh, only 21% on DraftKings at 5K. It seems like a pretty strong uh, just plug and play. I mean, we're not expecting 45 fantasy points playing him, but if he gives us 25 to 30, we're going to be pretty happy with that, I think, right? Definitely, man. I, I love that call, especially with no Kawhi Leonard here. I think he should fill in and play pretty good. So 5K does seem a little bit too cheap for Pal. And then we have a couple guys near the top of uh, DK value that are around 4k cam whitmore terrence mann tim hardaway jr and Kentavious caldwell pope so i mean that's a sick group of uh nba talent what are we doing here yeah i think thj is fine here at you know four thousand. um you know i think he's just i'm kind of neutral to the fields at 23 percent. i don't know if i'll take a huge stand and then in terms of kcp he should get a minor bump in terms of shots if murray's out but i don't feel like he's a guy i'm really targeting too heavily but what are your thoughts on this? Uh, so, I mean, it's pretty much the same as it is with KCP every day. He's a really good last last man in. Like, if you get to the last roster spot, you have this much salary left. I don't think you could be too upset uh, playing KCP at 4,400. And like you said, if Jamal Murray's out, he's going to look a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, THJ, he's been better recently, but this dude has been... He's, he's been so bad this season. And all right see like 26 minutes i mean he's playing good minutes in the last five games um his fantasy scores are okay i don't know i'd rather not chase the chalk uh with tim hardaway but i don't think we we should be uh full fading him at all yeah i'm kind of right there with you just kind of neutral to the field with him then cam whitmore i'm like leaning towards get away from a little bit just because of minutes projection is solo but even at 23 minutes he's still one of the better values in the model so 
uh, we'll see what we do with him by the end of the show. Yeah, I'm kind of right there with you. I don't know, man. He's kind of the similar boat to Tim Hardaway. Fine with it, but I'm not like in love with the play. And then a couple of uh, mid-range guys at the model, you know, likes enough. Dante DiVincenzo, Amon Thompson, and then it likes Kelly Oubre as it is right now. If Maxi and or Embiid get ruled out, uh, Oubre is going to look much better, especially over on DraftKings 6,500. It's like, I'm not saying the 6,500 is a good price, but the 7,800 on Fandle, like that's a deep GPP play, I think, even if uh, Embiid and Maxi are out. But if one or both of those guys are out on drafting 6,500 for Kelly Oubre. Uh, this ownership will go up, but I think it's a pretty good mid-range play too. Yeah, I agree. And I think Oubre came in really low on last slate. Everyone flopped the campaign. Um, I think, you know, if we get Maxi out once again, potentially Embiid, um, he makes for a great low on play um, as well. I, I really like that call, man. Yeah, and uh, thanks for bringing up campaign. We haven't got to, uh, he's not going to show up high in the model because everyone's still in like, Obviously, we're not interested in him if uh, Maxi and Embiid are in. But if Maxi's out and campaign starts again, 4,500 on DraftKings. I mean, it's just the minutes are there for him. He just kind of has to play. They don't have many other options. So campaign 4,500 if Maxi's out and he's starting. Uh, I think he's a like, he might be my highest on player if uh, Maxi ends up out. Yeah, agreed, man. I think he's, he's still pretty cheap, right? Like sub 4K. So yeah, I mean, um, I think he's a really solid player. Um, I did want to hear your thoughts on kind of similar price points. Guys like Keon Ellis, Miles um, McBride's a little bit more pricey, but these guys that are kind of peripheral players on their team, do you have any interest in either of those guys? Yeah, I'm still interested in Miles McBride. Seems like the appropriate price on DraftKings, 5,900. We haven't predicted for 42 minutes. Nice. Uh, minutes <laughs> prediction came down a little bit. But, I mean, the 6,600 on Fandle, again, it's, we're missing one game over there, so the 19% ownership I think makes sense. Um, and then you mentioned uh, Keon Ellis, a little bit of a different price range, but yeah. I mean, what do we have projected for minutes wise? 28 minutes, Keon Ellis, 4,900, he's 33% on Fandle, but only 8% on DraftKings. Like, I guess that's a uh, part of the, if I'm going to guess like Norman Powell not being on the Fandle slate is one reason for that. Like, uh, you know, rosters are just in need of a mid range guy, I guess, but let's take a look at a uh, Keon Ellis the last few games. I think Malik Monk's out too, right? I think that probably accounts into it a little bit. Yeah, Malik Monk's out for the season. Kevin Werder, I think, is also out for the season. Um, So we'll see. I think like maybe Malik Monk can come back for uh, conference championships or something. But so his season's over, unfortunately. But Keon Ellis, I mean, minutes are kind of all over the place. Big difference between 22 and 38 minutes. Uh, I don't know. This is probably a little bit too risky for me. I'll probably not get there at all today. Yeah, he's definitely... Really risky. And then real quick to interject, we do have news on Maxi and Embiid. They are both expected to play per their coach here. So, um, yeah, <laughs> there's that. I've seen this before. <laughs> Cunningham yesterday. Um, <clears throat> all right. So we're going to assume that they're both in, but keep an eye on it. Um, be ready to swap your lineups two minutes after this game starts when <laughs> Embiid gets ruled out for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, Minutes projection for pods. <clears throat> so Golden State, they're missing Kaminga today. Pods, we haven't projected for 24 minutes. Uh, he's been okay lately, around 4,500. This is not a bad pivot to like Cam Whitmore, KCP at around the same price. I mean, he's been doing pretty well lately, 24, 31 minutes in the last two. I mean, he's playing over 20 minutes every game. He's 4,500. It's a shorter slate. And Houston is not a bad team to target players against. So pods looks good today. Yeah, I think he's a fine as a GPP dart there. Um, 4,500 especially would prefer him on DraftKings to the 5,500. I agree. Yeah, yeah. he's uh, he's going to be one of the solid pivots off of the other chalk, so mix him in. Yeah. Finished, <clears throat> finished with 305 points on DraftKings yesterday with Cunningham getting scratched. Yeah, yeah man. Um, I don't think it ended up being the my highest score at the end of the night, but most of the night, my best lineup had Cade Cunningham in it, and I'm looking at it like, this is cool. Like, I'm missing, you know, he was going to go off yesterday, so we're missing 55 fantasy points. Like, it's disappointing. Yeah, definitely disappointing, but that's still kind of crazy. You got 305. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, I want to make sure that we don't miss out on any of the other guards. I mean, like, I'm seeing Rozier's name. Uh... Duncan Robinson. 
Bogdan Bogdanovich, any interest in any of these other guys that are pulling like, you know, five to 10% ownership? Um, yeah. So I would have been more interested, more interested in Bogdanovich if one of these Atlanta guys was out, but none of these names, like I'm getting too much exposure to maybe Rozier in tournaments. Um, he can spike an upside game. So maybe a sprinkle of Rozier for me. Okay. I think, I think I'm on the same page. Uh, thoughts on Moody, maybe without Peyton. Let's see if Moody's in the model. I don't think Moody's in the model unless he's small forward only. Yeah, it's like, so we have Gary Payton projected for 14 minutes. Whatever we have Moody projected for, probably like eight minutes right now. Uh, they don't show up unless they're projected for 10. I mean, it's just going to be a tough call. I don't even know what, what's Moody's price right now. I think he's like, he got bumped a little bit, but he's still pretty. 38. Yeah, yeah 38. DraftKings. I mean, he's played 20 plus uh, in four straight games. Kaminga is out. He could see 20 minutes. I'm going to actually say that our minutes projection on him is probably incorrect. Um, yeah. Maybe like Gary Payton was out in the previous game, and I'm not aware of that. But either way, they're still missing a player from the rotation. Um, and with the lack of value today, I don't mind taking shots on Moses Moody. Even better if Gary Payton gets ruled out. Yeah, um, I'm actually pretty fond of Moody as a DFS by no, the field's kind of up and down on him, but I think with no um, no Kaminga here, I think he looks pretty solid as a dart throw. And uh, I know there are a couple questions about centers. We'll get to there in a few minutes. We didn't lock <laughs> Flynn yesterday. Amateurs, <laughs> I know, dude. Like, what are we doing, dude? Is that that's got to be like. I don't think you will ever have a better game than that. Like 50 points, like that's insane, man. Uh, I said this in the Discord right after. Like he is for sure the most random player to ever drop 50. Like previously, to me, it was Tony Delk. Um, and then everyone else on the list, like Corey Brewer, Terrence Ross, they had all averaged 10 points in the NBA. And John, uh, Malachi Flynn averaged like four and a half. So for sure the most random. Good for him, though. Love to see it. Love to see it. What is your professional opinion? Play Luca and value or a more balanced lineup? So the problem is we don't have, or it might not be a problem. We don't have like chalk, chalk value. Like we have Dylan Brooks, we have Cam Whitmore, but um, it's unlike the past few slates where if you play Luca, your lineup's probably going to be four or five spots that are the same as uh, you know a lot of people playing Luca. And so I think we definitely play Luca tonight, and I don't know, mix up some value like. There, no one's super chalk today, and so you don't. I don't think we have to worry about it as much as we did on the previous slates. There's just not that much new injury news yet. I mean, we still have a hour and a half to lock, a little bit later lock time today, so something could come up. But um, I don't know. What do you, what do you think, Jayhawk? Um, yeah, I'm kind of right there with you. I like playing Luca, but in terms of like the value plays, I'm kind of agreeing. Like some of them are fine. I'll probably be eating some of the chalk, but definitely some spots I'll probably be either be underweight too or just looking at other guys so yeah i will say so as of right now i'm a little bit over the field on luca uh just under 30 percent and those lineups i mean those lineups look fine but like the other lineups that don't have luca or Jokic, those are like very balanced lineups where the cheapest players cam whitmore at 4.1k most expensive is uh like paul george at 8.4k so uh, looks like I'm going to have a mix of them today. I will say, like, I, I like the look of the balance lineups a bit more, um, but we'll have to see if any more value opens up. Yeah, I think both are very much solid lineup constructions tonight. So, uh, Mitchell Robinson can be super sneaky with Hartenstein trying to cover Sabonis. Let's see what uh, Mitchell Robinson's minutes look like. Mitchell Robinson. Oh, he's cute, so make sure that uh, he's in. But, I mean, the possibility of him only playing 10 minutes. Like, yeah, there's a possibility of him playing 20, which at 4,200, he's going to be a good play. Uh, very, very risky. I wouldn't do this if you're only making a lineup or two. But if you're making, like, 20-plus lineups, then you can probably take a couple shots. But uh, it seems kind of thin. I'm going to see what uh, Mitchell Robinson's minutes projection is. We haven't projected for 15. I mean, it, it's a, that's a tough one for me. I probably won't be getting there, but... Like, yeah, it's possible he plays 20, I guess. We'll, we'll see. What do you think? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get there either. He's kind of just like, I don't know, coming off an injury, he's backing up hard and signs. So, like, I think it's probably a little bit too far-fetched for me to, to really get there. Can we play Luca Kyrie together? Uh, 
we mentioned this earlier on stream a little bit. Like I, I can only remember them both going off in the same game, like to be in the both in this uh, winning lineup one time this season. Maybe it's happened more than once, but uh, I think we do have enough other options in the pay up range to uh, get away from both of them. But like when I'm building my lineups with the lineup builder, I'm not putting a rule like max one of Luca or Kyrie. Like I'm allowing it to happen. It just so if it happens a couple times in my lineup set, I don't mind it. But it's probably not something I'm going to consciously do. Yeah, I'm the same way. I typically like to take a stand on one, but on FanDuel, it could be possible with the the, the three game or four game slot over there. So yeah, yeah I agree. Uh, Jalen Johnson, yeah, Jalen Johnson looks good. Let me just double check where he is in the model. Uh, yeah, he's number three in the model. So yeah, the model loves Jalen Johnson, thinks he's appropriate chalk. So projected for thirty five minutes. I mean, we love it. Yeah, love Jalen. Uh, let's go to forwards real quick. Let's see. Top of value, Dylan Brooks, J- Jalen Johnson, Derek Jones Jr., Norm Powell, Cam Whitmore. Uh, these first five seem fine to me, except for Derek Jones Jr., and then after that it gets a little bit more murky with guys like Batum, Draymond, uh, THJ. I mean, I like Paul George. DiVincenzo seems fine as a mid-range play. Uh, is there anything else you see here? Um. Yeah, so... I don't know. I mentioned, like, I guess guys like Keon Ellis, but I'm not getting there too much. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's kind of difficult. Yeah, like, just sorting through my uh, my forward exposure, it looks like I'm going to keep it kind of simple today. We're getting to a bunch of Cam Whitmore, Dante DiVincenzo, Norman Powell, Paul George, Jalen Johnson. Uh, those are my top five forwards. Um, I mean, after that, we ha- we do have a couple of nice mid-range plays, like I mentioned, like Amon Thompson, Josh Hart uh, is still fine as a GPP play. Uh, a couple of power forwards that I really don't like getting to, um, but I'm curious to hear what you think about them. PJ Washington and Jabari Smith. Um, I like the Jabari Smith call. I think he's sneaky in tournaments. Um, I'm never too high in Washington, but again, it's a small slate and power forward is not the best position. So I think I'm fine with Washington, but I really like that Jabari Smith call. Okay. Um, Because I was going to say I'm fine with Washington, but I'm not super interested in Jabari Smith. Um, So I guess we're on the opposite page there. But like with Washington, I'm usually never interested in him on larger slates. Just, I don't know. He doesn't really have the ceiling potential that he had before uh, playing next to Luca. So like, I think he's a solid candidate to give us like a 5X on DraftKings. Uh, But more than that, I don't know. And at least Jabari, like we know he does have a ceiling. Uh, but he's been pretty bad recently. 17%, 16% ownership. It's probably okay. 6,300 on DraftKings. Um, I mean, I'm definitely going to mix him in, but I don't love it too much. I think yeah. I'd rather get to Amon Thompson at basically the same price. No, I agree. And then there's one more guy down here in terms of forward value. Um, he's shooting guard on, on Yahoo, but were you going to get to any Amir Coffee here for the Clippers? I mean, I'm not typically too high on him. I think I prefer um, Powell, but I think he's definitely worth a shot, I guess. Amir Coffey, that's unfortunate, yeah. but I can't do it. Uh, on the single game slate, like the the showdown, it's going to be awesome because the salary is super low. But I don't know. It's even like, let's say I build my lineup and I have 3,100 left for the last spot and we can plug in Amir Coffey. I feel like I'd rather just rebuild my lineup. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's tough. He's probably going to play 20 plus minutes, but his usage is just so low. And kind of like Russ, he got a lot of that fourth quarter in the previous game. So most of these minutes came at the end of the game when it didn't even matter anymore. Um, and so I'm, I will say 10% ownership. Some models say, see any good? Uh, I mean, model thinks he's pretty poor value for 3,100. But again, like if it's the last guy in, I mean, you can find worse spots than Amir Coffee. Yeah, no, I agree. And then you mentioned DiVincenzo. Were you getting any Josh Hart? I don't know if we covered him yet, but... Uh, yeah, I mentioned that uh, Josh Hart, I like in the mid-range. I'm getting a little bit more DiVincenzo, but um, I mean, it's basically just random. If I hit build again, I might get a little bit more Josh Hart this time. So I like mixing both of these guys in. And while we're on New York, um, I mean, Bojan Bogdanovic, he's not really playing. He's not really doing well. It sucks because he's a good player. He's doing well in the Pistons. Uh, projected for 16 minutes at 3,600, 2% ownership. It's a short slate. It's possible. At least we know he's a good basketball player, just not playing as much as he probably deserves because Thibodeau is crazy. But, I mean, 19 in the last five games, he's played 19 minutes, 18 minutes, 11, 15, 16. So, I don't know. If he can get up to 18 minutes, give us 20-plus on this slate where we're lacking value. I mean, this is super thin, but if you're playing the big contest, I think it's worth a shot. Yeah, I think that's someone I wasn't considering, but I definitely think he's worth a stab now that you mentioned him. Um, 
definitely can get a shot rolling if he gets the minutes there. So yeah, I like that hole. And I'm talking about like I might have like six percent. Like yeah. not we're not going crazy on him at all. Yeah, definitely. Um Trey Lyles. Trey Lyles is super frustrating. Um, especially when he's chalk. He's not really chalk today, 3600, 16%. I think that looks pretty good. Par for eligibility over on DraftKings. Yeah, I think I prefer Lyles to Bogdanovich around that price point. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, definitely a safer play, I think. But yeah, I think he's I think he's a totally fine player at 36. Yeah, especially on these shorter slates. Uh guys like Trey Lyles, like I mean, apparently he's capable of putting up 32 and a half. Um, but I mean the days he puts up like a 16, uh, it's not gonna kill us, you know. Yeah, especially like out of his prize, you're definitely not dead with that on the slate. And uh any other forwards before we move on to centers? Um, yeah, I was looking down here, like, I don't know, Andrew Wiggins, maybe fifty eight hundred. He can get a shot rolling with no Kaminga. I don't hate that that play there. Um, another lone guy I think I can would be fine getting to in tournaments. And then did we mention Clay Thompson? Um, I don't know. I think he's fine as well. Um, I think I lean Wiggins, but I, don't know, I think both those guys are fine in tournaments. Uh, so with Clay, I'll say the 11% on DraftKings seems fine as a GPP play, but the 40% on Fanduel seems insane. And again, we're missing that that fourth game, and this is Norman Powell money. Uh, but I don't know. It seems a little bit high. If you can find a pivot, I think I'd rather find a pivot. But if you land on Clay, obviously, I mean, he's going to be 40% owned. Model thinks he's okay. It's not the worst play. Yeah, I tend to agree with that. Um, I mean, let's say... Uh, like Jamal Murray gets rolled out. We, did, we didn't get any more news on him, did we? Um, No, but I think they're being pretty cautious with him towards the end of the season here. So I expect him to sit, but he, he could play against. All right, let's say uh, Jamal Murray's rolled out. I mean, I'm going to be pretty interested in MPJ and Aaron Gordon as a GPP plays. We'll have to see what their DK value uh, goes up to after that. They're not in the FanDuel slate. But at these ownerships, I mean, they're going to come up if Jamal Murray gets rolled out, but uh, if they only come up a little bit, I'm going to be taking shots on both of them. Yeah, um, I agree with that for sure. I think I lean Gordon, but it's close. Um, Westbrook thoughts on DK. You think he's too cheap, sub 5K. The problem, so we talked about Westbrook earlier. The problem with him is the minutes. He played like six or eight minutes in the first half, and then most of the 24 minutes he played last game came in the fourth quarter after Ty Lue gave up. And so you would think that he'd be you know, a pretty good lock for 20 plus minutes with Kawhi Leonard out, but he's just not. Um, and so I don't think he's too cheap. This, I think this is probably the appropriate pl- price. And so he's a fine play. Um, don't really, you know, feel too strongly one way or the other, given the ownership he's coming in at today. Yeah, I feel like, again, he's he's solid. I've mentioned this a lot, solid, but I'm not huge on Westbrook. You mentioned Powell. I prefer Powell as well. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd rather get to Powell. Um, and it's like if uh, Powell was pulling much more ownership than Westbrook, then yeah, we could pivot a bit. But if Powell's really going to pull less ownership, then I'm just going to mostly go to Powell and hope that works out. Yeah, I agree. Draymond Green, Dylan Brooks, ejection, book it. Let's get it. How do we plan for uh, ejections? I saw someone ask about TJD. Um, let's go ahead and get into centers. Uh, so when Draymond gets ejected 12 seconds into the game tonight, TJD, where is he on value? It's actually pretty low on value, uh, given his price tag, 6K, 1% owned on DraftKings, uh, 18 over on Fandle. Trace Jackson Davis, you have anything on him? Um, Yeah, 6K does seem insane, but he's been pretty solid, man. Um, You know, I would love him if, if Draymond got ejected, man. But um, yeah, I mean, at 1% on DraftKings, center is not great. I don't hate him as a pivot to a chalky Gafford. Um, so yeah, I think I'm fine with it. Probably wouldn't go too crazy, assuming Draymond's in. So I think he's fine. How about you, though? I like him. I don't know why he lost minutes last game, though. Uh, only played 21. He's been playing like 26 plus most of the other games. Underdog has him projected to start tonight. Uh, Steph Clay, Andrew Wiggins, Draymond Green, Trace Jackson Davis. Um, if anyone in the chat knows why he lost some minutes last game, let us know. Uh, but either way, I think he's fine, especially if he comes in super low. And, like the model actually doesn't think he's that great, but. At the one percent ownership, I think he's worth taking some shots. Definitely, yeah. He's, um, I like him ahead. as a player. I was just gonna say I like him as a player, so I typically like to be overweight to him when he's. I like him too. Yeah, yeah, rooting for him in his career. Um, I think I saw a couple of comments about Joel Embiid. So Joel Embiid minutes, he's projected for thirty and a half. I don't know how many he played last time out. 
I cannot tell you. <laughs> he played 29. Uh, it's probably pretty... Yeah, this 30-minute minutes production is probably a safe guess. Uh, I mean, we've seen Joel and B get there in three quarters how many times this season? And so I'm not super interested in him today, but I will say that the one and two percent ownership, even though he's 11k, like this is Jokic and almost Luka money. Um, I don't know if you're making only a couple lineups, I wouldn't go here. But if you're making 20 plus or 150 lineups and you're, you're in the biggest GPPs, then I could see uh, taking a couple shots on Joel Embiid. Yeah, uh, you mentioned getting there in third quarters. How many times this year did we see him get get there in third quarters? It was a lot, pretty yeah. insane, man. So. Yeah, I don't hate the call. Definitely not a low risk type play, but in tournaments has a you know really low on stab. I don't hate it. And then, uh, I mean, we already know Daniel Gafford. The model is very clearly uh, saying Gafford's the best center play on the slate today. Uh, Zubak is next, and I like Zubak a lot on DraftKings. I think the ownership is appropriate. And then after that, it gets kind of, I mean, it's already gross, but it gets more gross. Draymond, Clint Capella, Isaiah Hartenstein, whose minutes are up in there with Mitchell Robinson re-entering the rotation. I mean, Jabari Smith uh, is probably fine at that ownership. And then Jokic as the payup. So, I mean, uh, give me something else with center here. Um, yeah, I would say, I was going to say Jokic, I think is too low. And even if Murray, for some reason, played, I still think he could have a pretty big game at low ownership. Um, Bruno Fernando, I don't know, man. 4,100, I guess you can maybe, you know, convince me to play a little bit of him. Um, not huge on him. Um, and then, yeah, the rest of these guys, like, I don't know. I feel like all the top guys, Gafford, Zubach, Washington, probably the guys that probably project the best. But I think there's a couple low lone guys down here. I don't hate as well. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in getting over the field on Jokic, um, particularly if Jamal Murray is ruled out. If Jamal Murray plays... I just probably won't get to Jokic that much. And it's not because I don't like him. It's just it's really hard to fit him in on this slate um, if I'm already going to have a bunch of lineups with Luka. So I'll have Jokic either way, but I'll probably try a lot harder to get him in there if uh, Jamal Murray gets ruled out. Yeah, I agree. I feel like I'd prefer Jokic if Murray was out. But again, hopefully we get that news here pretty soon. So it's like, what do we do at center? Do we just play Gafford, mix in the rest? I mean, that's yeah. basically what I'm doing. I'm playing a bunch of Gafford, a bunch of Zubak. And then basically just mixing in all the other guys we just talked about that are up here, like PJ Washington, Jabari Smith, Draymond, uh, Trey Lyles, Jokic, TJD, Clint Capella. Yeah, for me, it was Gafford as well. I don't know, 5,700. I just really like the price there. Pretty decent matchup. And I like the Clint Capella call. Um, he's been getting there in limited minutes, um, even at 6,500. I think that's still a pretty good price. So I, I do like that call with Capella. Yeah, um, I'm not sure how much Jalen Johnson being back really affects Capella, but like intuitively, it feels like it hurts him a little bit. Um, but the price tag, uh, I still like Capella there. And then it's interesting to see who's going to play the backup center minutes for Dallas. I mean, Dwight Powell, I saw a tweet the other day. It was on April 1st that Dwight Powell got cut by the Mavs, and I didn't realize that it was an April Fool's Day joke. I thought he actually did get cut. Um, but we have Dwight Powell projected for 10, Maxi Kleber projected for 19. I mean, the whole field is going to Gafford. It's possible he gets into foul trouble or just Jason Kidd pulls a Jason Kidd. I mean, should we be looking a little bit harder at Kleber and Powell? Um, yeah, in tournaments, if you want to like get direct leverage, I think maybe one of them you could take a stab on. I probably would lean Kleber, but I just I don't know, man. Powell is just very difficult to predict minutes-wise. But I think these are like deep, deep, deep tournament flyers here pretty soon. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty deep. I mean, Maxi Kleber, I think we actually haven't projected for some decent minutes, though, right? 19 yes. minutes. Mm -hmm. Don't hate it. 3,100. Dwight Powell, not playing Dwight Powell. But yeah. uh, if you want to if you wanna play Maxi Kleber, I'm not going to talk you out of it. No, I'm right there with you. Does Luca hold grudges on teams like Sack and Atlanta for not drafting him and trading him? So I'm pretty sure Luca holds grudges. I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if he's particularly upset about what happened. I feel like uh, him ending up in Dallas is probably the best situation for him out of those possibilities. But I don't know. Do you, do you have anything on this? Um, I don't think so. I know, you, you know, him against Phoenix is a thing. But other than that, I don't, at least I don't think he has anything that's big like crowd or beef. But yeah, that's just my you know, thought on it. Yeah, I'm thinking like Luka versus Phoenix, Luka versus the Clippers. Like those are things that we know. Um I don't know. Him and Trey Young were traded for each other. I feel like they're both maybe Trey Young's not happy, but I don't think Luca's unhappy about what happened. So I'm yeah. not gonna adjust anything for that. No, I agree. Ellis or Clay? It's kind of two different price ranges. I'm pretty sure 
So I'm not super high on clay, but I'm pretty sure it's clay either way. Um, if I can get this here in the model. Definitely clay for me. I mean, they're different price points, like you mentioned, but clay will project, in my opinion, way better. Yeah, and I mean, points per dollar, clay actually isn't that far ahead of Keon Ellis. Um, a bit higher in OF index. And pretty similar ownership. I mean, 33% ownership for Keon Ellis on Fandle. That seems insane, dude. I'm going to take a closer look at this because this might be a fade. Yeah, I mean, like, he's very up and down. I think the douche called him one of, like, the worst chalk was when he's chalk. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think he's very boom boss. I'm not huge on him tonight by any means. Yeah, when he was, like, $1,000 less, sure, sign me up. If he's going to, you know, play 24-plus minutes, maybe hit some threes, get some stocks. But at 5K, especially if he's going to pull this ownership on FanDuel, I feel like you can hopefully try and find a, a, a pivot. But... Like I'm kind of getting why him and players like him and Clay Thompson are coming in so owned. It's just it's kind of tough to fill that shooting guard position. Yeah, ten degree. It's very difficult, in my opinion, shooting guard today. Gary Payton on Fanduel. Uh, so I mean, we just said how difficult is Gary Payton not a shooting guard on Fanduel? Small forward. All right. Well, Gary Payton. Okay, he is a shooting guard on Fanduel. And so just mentioned how hard it is to fill. I mean, twelve percent for Gary Payton at thirty nine hundred projected for only fourteen minutes. Like that feels wrong, but. Again, like we just went through the shooting guards and they suck, so I kind of get it. Yeah, I don't think he's the worst stab. I think him and Moody is always tough to navigate because either one could have a great game. But yeah, I think I probably would lean Moody, but I think Peyton's fine as well to take a stab there. Yeah, they're both going to be all right. Uh, Kyrie, yeah, we think Kyrie's fine. Uh, rather just try and find $4,000 to get up to Luca, but uh, <laughs> Kyrie looks good in the model today too, so... Yeah, on, that only four thousand dollars. Yeah, just fine. <laughs> is Cam Whitmore the best cheap value on DraftKings today? Uh I mean, according to the model, he's like I don't know how you define cheap, but he's like the fourth best uh cheap value on DraftKings. I mean, just the other options, Norman Powell, Dylan Brooks, Derek Jones Jr. It's kind of gross. Like I feel like Dylan Brooks might be a little bit safer just because his minutes are probably a little bit more guaranteed. I did see a comment that Cam Whitmore is off of his minutes restriction. I didn't even know he was on a minutes restriction. I don't know how much it matters because it's not like he has the potential to play 30 minutes anyway. Uh, he's been playing just over 20, and I just don't see that really changing. I think what we haven't projected for 23 minutes. Yeah, we haven't projected for 23. Like, I don't really think he's going to play more than that in most scenarios. Yeah, that's an interesting regard there with the minutes restriction. Yeah, I agree. Typically doesn't play more than that, around more than that. So, yeah, I think he's probably properly projected in terms of minutes uh besides westbrook i don't think westbrook is good value today i'm pretty sure the model doesn't think so either um like 13.4 dk value for westbrook uh, i mean he's basically on the first page he's tied with these guys and so like he's not he's definitely not the best value i'm not going to say he's bad value either um but he's closer to being bad than he is to being the best Yep. I know it's a small side. I did want to ask you, though, would you be fine playing Powell and Westbrook together? Uh, yeah, I think so. So, like I mentioned earlier, I want to see the Clippers start Amir Coffee with Norman Powell coming off the bench. Um, Norman Powell is going to be great either way. And for some reason, his ownership is going to be higher if he starts. But I think it's the same if he's off the bench anyway. Um, if they're both off the bench, it's a little bit tougher. But I want to say Norman Powell got some fourth quarter run in, uh, after Ty Lue gave up in the previous game, too. And so I'm not against playing them together, I guess, if that answers the question. Yeah, I just, I was curious because, like, I know it's a, you know, four or five game room, both sides, but I don't know. I just felt like if they're both off the bench, could they both get there? Um, definitely interesting topic. He likes to go at Trey, assuming that's Luca. Well, Trey's out tonight, so he gets to go at DeJounte Murray, a uh, defensive specialist or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree. Is Dante Exum playing blowouts? Do you know? Um, I I have no idea on that. <laughs> um, let me look. Let me look at the blow games here. Um, I mean, the previous game was a close game. He got a few minutes in the fourth. It's like he still played twenty minutes without blowout run in the previous game, and I just I don't want to make decisions like, all right, I'll play Dante Exum because we're giving him an extra five minutes because we think the game's gonna blow out and he'll get those five blowout minutes. Uh, yeah. two games ago they won by twenty. He did not get the blowout run. Didn't play in the fourth quarter at all. Yeah, I tend to think that he doesn't get that many blow minutes. I think probably more Jaden Hardy gets them. But yeah, that's just kind of my assumption there. 
And it's like, it's a 12 point spread. You know, it's significant. Uh, I still don't want to make decisions on guys like Dante Exum, though, based on if I think they're going to get blowout run. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Lucas scored 70 real points earlier this year versus Atlanta. Yeah, he holds grudges for sure. Was Trey Young in that game? If Trey Young was in that game, which he probably was, um, that changes things, you know, with Trey Young not being there today. But like we said, Lucas is a great play. I mean, Stu could score, what, 40 point triple double on any given night. Yeah, I think we both love him, right? So even if he does hold a grudge or he doesn't, I think we're playing him. So, <laughs> and Luca doesn't need grudges. He's dropping 80 on everyone. True. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Atlanta's defense and fast pace is what allowed that score to happen. The problem is Atlanta isn't running at this fast pace without Trey Young. Like 228 and a half total is fine, but it still feels low for this Atlanta Dallas matchup. Like Dallas was the fastest team in NBA history uh, at the time a few years ago. Now there's like, 20 teams today are faster than they were but uh yeah i'll it's been a theme recently i think atlanta's totals are too low but it's right it's just so the pace isn't quite as fast as we thought it was earlier yeah i think trey being out may adjust that a little bit because you know trey is very very offensive minded player so uh pretty good question here keegan murray or andrew wiggins you have anything on that um i think keegan probably is the better ceiling um, but I think Wiggins probably more times than not hits his floor. So if you're already playing Peyton and TJD, I'd probably lean Keegan. But I think if it was a 1v1, I'd lean Wiggins. I know that's a lot I threw at you. But um, yeah, it's kind of more he's already playing Peyton and TJD. I think my answer is exactly the same. They're basically the same in the model. Um, I mean, Keegan's pulling a little bit more ownership. But yeah, if you already have the other two Warriors, uh, I'd probably just go with Keegan and model approved anyway. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, first time Wits playing without Sangoon, though. Yeah, but it's like, I don't know. I, I'm not quite sure why. Yeah. Uh, I'm like trying to think. Like, we're trying to make an argument for Cam Whitmore playing a few more minutes in 23 minutes when he's already one of the best value plays on the slate. Like, um,. I don't know. Are you guys arguing in favor of playing him or not playing him? I feel like you're arguing in favor of playing him. And it's like, he's the second uh, best value in the model. He's going to look pretty good. So I'm playing a ton of him. I just, it's slightly uncomfortable, but he's still probably going to be one of my highest exposed players today. Yeah, agreed. <clears throat> Jimmy Buckets first Philly. Yeah, now we know Jimmy holds grudges. Um, That's definitely a grudge. Yeah, so Jimmy Butler versus uh, Miami. As long as Joel Embiid plays, Joel Embiid, or Jimmy Butler, double-digit OF index, uh, pretty pretty good ownership on both sides. Decent value for his price. I mean, yeah, Jimmy looks fine. He's probably, I want to say he's my favorite play from the Heat. Kind of interested in Bam as a low-owned center, too, but I uh, do like Jimmy. Yeah, I think Jimmy's also my favorite play, so yeah, I like that, like that grudge call by you, Race Fan. <laughs> Right, let's put it together a dummy build. Um, let's get Cam Whitmore in there since we've been talking about him so much. I think we got to go with Gafford and Jalen Johnson too since they're top of the model. From all those. And... Um, Jalen Johnson and then we need to get get a couple. Luka. I was going to say, let's get a couple more yeah. value guys and see how the lineup looks if it's uh, going to be difficult to fit Luca. I mean, if we put him in right now, it leaves us 5,200 for each spot actually isn't bad. We can try building with Luca. Okay. How do we feel about Terry? Terry Rozier? I think we both said that we thought he was a fine GPP play. Yeah, definitely fine at 4% or whatever he's projected for. Um, yeah, probably just going to be fine in tournaments. But... Oh, we got Big T in the chat. What's up, dude? Big T. Is that a burner, though? It's for sure a burner. <laughs> you messed up the name, though. Um, last question. Would we play Dabby on Mitchell over on FanDuel? I'm just going to look him up here to see what his minutes have been recently. Uh, I mean, he's playing over 20 minutes, and like we said, like Malik Monk and Kevin Werder are out for the season. Um, so he's 3,900 on DraftKings. We might have overlooked him. Is he not really popping in the model? Um, yeah, I feel like him and Keon were kind of both. I feel like Keon was getting all the, the love, but Davion's actually played pretty well in his minutes. So I don't know. I'm kind of neutral on him. How about you? As like a, if we're looking at like pure DFS game theory, Davion is an awesome play on FanDuel. Uh, 33% ownership for Keon Ellis, 1% for Davion Mitchell. We're saving $700. Like one of the reasons Keon Ellis could fail is Davion takes a couple minutes from him. Um, so like by himself, Davion, not a great play at 4,500. Um, 3,900 on DraftKings at 0% though. I actually am probably going to take some shots now on him. Thanks for pointing him out. Um, yeah, he's okay. 
Yeah. Ten degree. I feel like he's more of a leverage play off, off of Keon more than anything for me, especially on FanDuel. I'm trying to think of it. it's like if I play Davion Mitchell, I know what I'm getting into, right? Like I expect him to fail most of the time. And when it works out, I'm going to feel great. Where with Keon Ellis, well, it's like with Davion Mitchell, I'm, no one else is going down with me. No one else is playing him. And so if I'm playing Davion Mitchell, he fails. Like I have the only lineup that's sinking. If I play Keon Ellis and he fails, like, yeah, 33% of the field is coming down with me, but it doesn't matter. I'm still dead with Keon. Um, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but yeah, Davion <laughs> Mitchell is fine as a 1% play. <laughs> Yeah, no, I completely agree. Great 1% play. Thoughts on PJ Washington? I usually hate him on the larger slates because I don't see the ceiling on Dallas, but uh, projected for 33 minutes, there's no Derek Lively. He probably gets the backup center minutes, so I'm okay with this uh, chalk today on DraftKings anyway. FanDuel 6,200 is a little uncomfortable, but we have to make some concessions over there. So, But 5,300 for PJ on DraftKings seems fine, and I usually hate him. Yeah, man, I think it's definitely the smaller you know, slate as well boost my interest in him um if it was a bigger slate we mentioned earlier would be a lot less interested in pj um i will just say though if we're sorting like the centers now this is sorting centers by dk value pj washington you know he's a little bit down here guys like hartenstein jabari smith trey lyles clink Capella, and draymond i mean subak gafford these guys are all higher than him um but i'm not sure like minutes with hartenstein 25 could be kind of weird and then yeah, I don't know. Peter Washington's fine. Yeah. How do we feel about Christian Brown? If Jamal Murray's out, I don't know. You got something on your favorite player? <laughs> yeah, man. Um, he's he's been he's had a couple of spike games. I don't know. I think if Murray's out, you can maybe take a stab. He's kind of in that Davion Mitchell tier with me. I think he's fine if he you know if he scores good, but I kind of like to play him when MPJ and or Gordon are out as well. So. Um, typically more of an MPJ out when I t- like to play him. But yeah, fine for like a really low on shot, I guess. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, 3,800, Jamal Murray's out. He probably goes overlooked. And let's say we don't get, because this last game starts two hours after the previous one, right? And so if we get late news, people aren't going to be able to swap. Um, so uh, just keep your options open. You know, there's guys we can pivot to if you start with Brown in your lineup and then if you just have like two or three players from the last game you could probably swap to them and get them in there if you didn't have them before yeah so Powell's getting the start he started last time um i don't think that starting lineup works so i think they should be starting a mere coffee but underdog does have a Powell projected the start still uh but let's see what Ty Lu does just pay attention to either way i think Powell's a really good play yeah and then i think Powell starts man i think i'm fine playing both him and westbrook together so just kind of monitor that um it's kind of be depend on who starts there for the Clippers. Um, Beetle the Bump, great name. Uh, <laughs> and ask as many questions as you want, dude. It's all good. Uh, would we play Buddy Heald over Dylan Brooks? Not sure. You have you have a you have a good answer. Um, so I feel like they're both kind of this similar player. Like both are kind of shooting reliant. Um, I would lean Heald if if Maxi was out, but I think if. You know, since he's expected to play, I would lean Dylan Brooks even at chalk. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, bump God, like you said, if you project Dylan Brooks for heavy minutes, I mean, even Dylan Brooks projected at 28 and Buddy Heald is not anywhere near like the first page of value here. So I just missed him. Uh, Buddy Heald just hasn't been getting the minutes. And if Embiid and Maxi are both going to play, like it's not going to get better with Embiid on the court, you know, Buddy yeah. Heald projected for 23 minutes. And so. Uh, I mean, model definitely prefers Dylan Brooks, and I don't even know if Buddy Heald is worth. Like he's okay, he's a lower owned pivot uh, who can hit a few threes. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, he seems pretty peripheral as a play for me, Buddy Heald. That is, so yeah, I'm not too high on him. Yeah, d- not to say Dylan Brooks is safe either. <laughs> no, 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 both of them are hashtag not good at basketball. <laughs> Ty lose mind so confused since Iverson stepped over him. I mean, 20 years, man. <laughs> He's been confused for 20 years. Yeah, it's crazy. Thoughts on Precious? Wasn't even thinking about him today. Uh, with Mitchell Robinson back, I'm pretty sure Precious did go off in the first game with Mitchell Robinson back. Got the blowout run, but I mean, 4,300. I guess he played 27 and 22 in the last couple. Um, yeah, I don't I don't hate him as uh, some GPP shots. Yeah, I think he's fine. I, you know, he got a lot of those big games when it did blow out, like you mentioned. So 
he's fine as a low and stop, but I don't, I'm not getting there too much myself. All right, let's see if we can build out this dummy and then get, get you out of here. Uh, we have a little bit later lock time today. Jay Alex is going to be in the Discord. Make sure you guys join that. See, uh, here's some analysis on some late breaking news instructions in the description below. Um, it's like, why is it all Houston people at the top here? <laughs> all right, so who else do we want to throw in the dummy? Um, do we want to get, do we have Powell in there yet? Uh, no, good call. My Let's favorite play. Yeah, my favorite play that I project to 5x. <laughs> well, yeah. On this slide, we'll take it, man. Uh, we'll take it, yeah. Norman Powell. So he's small forward eligible. Let's see if there's a small forward or small plays. I mean, can we fit Paul George in here? I love it. Let's try and get Paul George in there and just make sure you guys set your stuff right. Like put Paul George down here, whatever. But we're running out of time, so I'm just trying to do this quick. I feel like there were some uh, min price guys that we were saying were not the worst plays ever. You got Davion Mitchell, Trey Lyles. I think those guys are all below 4K. Yeah, Mitchell. Um, Let's do a. Uh, I feel like so. I, I kind of like Davion Mitchell now that uh, someone mentioned him, but I don't want to put him in the yeah, probably not me build. <laughs> Trey Lyles, 3,600, leaves us 38 for the utility. That way, is Trey Lyles center only? Nice power forward. Let me get this here. Uh, Trey Lyles, 3,600, and 3,800 for util gives us. I wish we could get up to uh, like Derek Lively. Show the out tag, dude. This dude's not playing today. <laughs> we could get up to Dylan Brooks. Like if we you you want to come down somewhere, get up to Dylan, Dylan Brooks. I'd probably just get up to Dylan Brooks here. Moses Moody is not a bad shot. Christian Brown, if uh, Jamal Murray ends up getting ruled out, it's not a bad shot. Yeah, I agree with all those calls. Saw some, uh, you know, Dante Exum question in the chat. We mentioned Bogdanovich, the one on New York. So a few things to do. It's kind of a weird slate, but uh, you know, you guys have any more specific questions? Join the Discord. Get out, Jayhawk. You have any uh, final words? No, nah, man, definitely interesting slate. Um, excited to bring it down in Discord per usual. So make sure to hop in there and uh, good luck. Appreciate you guys watching.